All right, thank you for attending the faculty and staff training presented by the Career Development Center. I am going to share my screen with you at this time. Okay. So as I stated just moments ago, to share with you a little bit about the staff of the Career Development Center, we are in the process of hiring a director. The position uh, closed on June the 7th and we are reviewing the applications now. I am Antoinette Hargrove Duke, the Associate Director. You had an opportunity to meet Ms. Emily Briggs and you have also met Mr. Daryl Nolan. Today, this is the agenda that we will follow. This presentation in itself, we will cover handshake, a brief overview, interview stream, tutor assessment, the vault, my next move, and then if you have any questions, we will entertain them after the presentation. The hours of operation, as many of you know, of course, we are um, responding to our students and employers, faculty and staff virtually. But when we're on campus in the fall, we are located on the third floor, suite 304. Our normal hours of operations, eight to 4.30, with our computer lab being open daily. During the summer, of course, our virtual hours are 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and 7.30 a.m. to 5.30. Um, we do see five there, but it's actually 5.30. One of the opportunities that we have because we are virtual is all of our appointments can be scheduled through Handshake. And we'll talk about that a little later. And because of the need to be available for the faculty and the staff and our students, we do have evening hours available upon request. Here are the services that we offer. These are some of the ones that we'll point out, but it's not limited to these. Resume cover letter review, interview preparation, mock interviews, internship search assistance, career assessments, job search assistance, graduate school planning, and of course, we'll talk about the Handshake profile and LinkedIn as well. A lot of this information is helpful to you because as you are interacting with the students, to know what services we have available helps us partner um, while you are um, teaching the students and working with them, you can send them our way in the Career Development Center. Now, the National Association of College and Employers recognizes some core competencies. And here's where we have an opportunity to partner and connect. As you are working with our students in the classroom, we like the, the, to take those um, concepts, concepts that are being taught in the classroom and translate that to something that can be a transition to corporation. And this is what employers are telling us that they would love to see from students as they graduate or matriculate through college. Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, um, their technical um, skills, leadership, professional work ethic, um, and then just understanding diversity. So these are recognized, the core competencies, by the National Association of College and Employers. Now here is where we find out about the virtual services that we have to offer. For the sake of time, we are actually going to be reviewing two directly, but we will give you information on all four of them. Handshake, I do get a little corny because I always say that employers are just one handshake away from getting the best. To give you a little history on Handshake, which is why it is really important that we provide you all with this information. Handshake was introduced to Tennessee State University around 2017. 2018, you would have seen a big push for it. Well, in 2019, of course, the Career Development Center had uh, a 75% reduction. So there was not as much of a push for Handshake so I remember Dean Stevenson saying to me, you know, Miss Duke, you're walking around talking about handshake, handshake. 
I don't think people really know, you know, what handshake is. So this is why it's really um, good for us to have the opportunity to share with you how important it is for our students to activate their account in Handshake. And so again, we'll talk about the other ones just in a moment, but I want to uh, just share with you that we are in the, the uh, we have the ability to interact with our students, even in this virtual space that we're in, because of the services that we have available in the Career Development Center. Uh, so uh, your badge that you will receive is the Career Connector Badge, because that's what we do. We make connections. We are able to help students navigate their future and mapping long-term long uh, career strategies and uh, addressing the process of acquiring internships, full-time and part-time positions. This is the brief PowerPoint presentation that we have. Um, again, we are typing some information into the chat so that if you have questions, you can either put them in the chat and we will um, address them at that time. Or if you want to wait to the end of the presentation, we can do that as, as well. But at the end of the uh, entire session, we will send you a survey that we really hope that each of you will take the opportunity to complete. What I will do at this time is bring up Handshake, which I kind of thought it was already up. <laughs> so what I will share with you, you will see the administrative view of this, but we have the opportunity to interact with our students by them activating their account in Handshake. But while this is important for you as faculty and staff, because we want you to see what we see um, with the lack of the students knowing that this service is available for them. So we are able to, from our dashboard, view how many students have activated their account and how often they use the service. Now we will share that this information comes from Banner. All of our students at Tennessee State University, including alumni, have access to Handshake. They just have to activate. So if you look at this student activation chart, for our alum, in our system, there are 1,221 that have activated their Handshake account. There are 2,000 who have not activated. For the undergrad, we have 2,748 who have activated their account, 5,000 have not. The reason this is a concern to us is as you will see when we go to the employers, when the employers connect with us, they tell us about the events that they're having, they tell us about internships, full part-time jobs, or just general um, information. And if our students have not activated their accounts, they don't even have access to the jobs that they're putting out there. Handshake is very much like LinkedIn. And we encourage students to update their LinkedIn profile because it's a professional um, system. But in Handshake, what we have the opportunity to do is work with our students, these employers know that they're not coming with five, 10 years of experience. They're looking for good talent. Uh, and so we want our students there so that they can interact with the employers. The employers have an opportunity to ask them for interviews. They can communicate with them. Students can research these companies. So we really need your help to get the students to really um, engage the employers that are in Handshake. The other opportunity that we have of looking at this data is through freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, this is helping us understand what students are really utilizing this service. So freshmen, there were 1,289 that have activated their account, and we still have 2,700 that have not. So we're looking at 31%. And that is of, 
of everyone that is in Handshake. Now we'll tell you that um, Handshake has to be scrubbed so that those students who have already graduated, we need to remove them out so that they can be listed as an alum. So they're not calculated in the number of our school year. So if you look at the sophomore numbers and the junior and the senior, now I would find that the senior number is a little more alarming because these are the students that are leaving, getting ready um, to look for employment if they have not had uh, internships. So we need to really make a push for our seniors to go into Handshake and look at the jobs that are available. And even if they don't see the job that they want at that time, at least they can do some investigation on the company. And then they can research the positions that they have and learn a little more about those companies. Now for the professors that are in specific majors, we are actually in the process of sending these charts and these graphs to you so that you could help us target these um, students in these majors. So if you look at business administration, just for an example, those are the numbers of students in that major that has activated their account. So we look at um, criminal justice, um, you know, so it, it, this will just give you an idea. And we are happy to share this chart with you uh, so that we can be in a better position to just ask them to really go in there and start utilizing Handshake. Now, this is what I say where Big Brother's really watching when the students tell us, well, I'm in Handshake. So this tells the story here. So if you can see just from the weekly logins, the undergrad number, alum, and graduate. And so then it tells us how many were not. You know, they haven't even logged in. So these are some scary numbers. But again, we are at the, the um, we have an opportunity by partnering with you all that when you see the students, because you have a lot more access to the students than we do at times, you can encourage them to use um, Handshake for the purpose in which it was um, designed. So again, we also have, we have the ability to know how many have actually completed their profile. And you know, with the professional photo, updating the information, they really want to market themselves through Handshake. And so this is the status and the information as far as them using it. We do encourage our students to make it public so that they can interact with the employers. So again, this is the information that we feel would be helpful to you as you are interacting with the students. So if we look at the employers, here, because our team is in it every day, every hour on the hour, if not more, whenever companies activate or ask for approval to come in our system, they will be impending. Then we research the company, just some standard things that we look at, and we will um, you know, just make sure that these are the companies that we want to have access to our students. And if so, we will approve them. So we have a list of all employers that have been approved in our system. The way we look at it is, after they fill out their application, if you will, or enter their information, um, we look at the trust score factor. And that's one criteria that we use to see if we will allow them into the system. Um, the trust factor could also indicate that maybe they just didn't put a phone number or they didn't put their company email address. Maybe they have a personal email address. And then we can go in and do some investigation to see if we really do want to allow them to have access to our students. So they are approved and once they are approved, they can post all of their jobs, they can post events. And we have been seeing companies put in here when they have virtual events that are going on as well. We can look and um, help students by looking at their view to see what they see. Now, I just wanna share this particular survey with you all at this point, you will probably see that we've sent an email out 
making this appeal to have our 2019 graduates complete the first destination survey. That survey gives us data from a regional standpoint, which compares us with other universities and colleges. So it's really important that our students fill this survey out. This survey was published back in April and we are still trying to get our students to complete the surveys. Now our numbers are a little alarming. We are less than 10% of the graduating seniors from 2019 as far as getting them to fill out this survey. And it really doesn't look good because we really need them to participate in this survey so that when we're looking at where we are ranking on a national level, we can see how our students are um, being matched with other colleges and universities. You know, have they found work? Are they still looking? Um, or they're just not seeking? Maybe they've decided to go to graduate school. So I, I show you this report to um, ask for your assistance that if you have contacts with students that graduated last year in 2019, please help us help them understand the importance of this data. Um, and so as we go to 2020, we are seeking that data as well. And this comes from the first destination survey. And again, a lot of people are unfamiliar with the term, but if you want a copy of the 2018 first destination survey, I will send that to you upon request and you will see how important the information that we retrieve is um, for us being a measured, a benchmark nationally. In the system, any events we put in here, when we get information on scholarships, when we get information on other jobs where companies may not be in the system, we will put that in Handshake, which gives our students another avenue of getting information. Our career fairs, the only way that employers can join us for the career fair is if they have Handshake, they have to register. So this year it's going to look different. We will have a virtual career fair. Handshake was not prepared for it, so it's a new product that they're putting out and it should be available at the end of June. So we will be opening up career fairs for the fall, but it will be virtual. And honestly, at this point, we don't know what it looks like, um, whether or not they'll be charged, whether or not this one will be free. Uh, but Handshake realizes this time, the companies or the universities will not be charged. So we're just trying to figure out how we can work through that with our um, employers. And then the last thing that I'll go over in Handshake is um, students have the opportunity to schedule appointments with our team. And this is that virtual um, appointment schedule where they go in and whatever their request is, our team is available to meet with them. And so they just schedule an appointment and, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that and then we can accept it, decline, or just maybe suggest another time if there's a conflict. Uh, I did say that was the last thing, but I will point out here, interviews. When employers want to interview our students, they can request it at this point right here. So as long as the employers are interacting with our students in Handshake, we can it. But typically what happens is they will come out and start having conversations with the students, which at that point, we don't have access to. So um, this is a brief overview of Handshake, and this system alone could probably take an hour for us to go over. But we want you to know how important it is that as you're interacting with the students, you just share with them that the Career Development Center has awesome resources, and we just want to be able to share them with our students. Now I'll have Mr. Nolan come to talk to you about the other two virtual services, and then I'll come back and talk about the vault. Okie dokie. Alrighty. So, um, again, my name is Mr. Daryl Nolan. I'm here to talk about the interview stream and Cooter assessment. 
So um, Interview Stream is an online service that allows you to prepare for upcoming job interviews. It critiques you, uh, you and it shares your, inter your, inf your interview information with your career counselor. So I know you're like, okay, what in the world is that? So Interview Stream is actually an online mock interview. And so what we're able to do is we're able to go in and pre-populate some questions for you that might be on your interview and you're able to record yourself um, having those interviews. And then when you get done, it saves it for you. So that way you're able to go back and watch what, watch what you did. So you're not like me and you're not saying, um, every 10 seconds in the midst of your interview. Um, so interview stream is one of the, I think, in my opinion, a great tool that we can use for our students so that way when they do go out into the career field and they do have these interviews, whether it's virtually or in person, they're prepared. Um, and then also we have something called Cooter Assessment. And uh, Cooter Assessment basically takes your, your interest and it helps us figure out what you want to do. So it helps us figure out your future career um, endeavors or whatever you're interested in. We take that into a, into a little test and then we're able to figure out what you want to do. Um, so Cooter Assessment is also a very helpful tool that we have within our Career Development Center. And that's Cooter Assessment and Interview Stream in a nutshell. And again, we can talk hours upon that as well. But um, for the sake of time, that was it's a little condensed version. And so now I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Duke. Thank you. And the one thing we say about the Cooter Assessment is it allows the students to ask, uh, answer a few questions. And then those questions kind of maybe guide them in an area of interest as far as their career. Now, this is kind of funny because a couple of people filled it out and um, it indicated that maybe they would go into teaching and they were like, but I don't even like kids. So it's not a, a you know, one size fit all. It just kind of helps um, match interest for um, based on the questions that they'll they'll answer and we have the opportunity to go in there and just through uh, career counseling and advice and guidance to help direct them of course we can't tell them what they want to be or what they want to do or what their purpose is but based on the results of the assessment we can certainly um, be in a position to help guide them so the next um, service that we'll show you uh, is the vault. And we look at that as like a bank. You know, there's just a lot of money, a lot of treasures. And so in the vault, that's what we find as well. The students have the opportunity to search for jobs. There are guides in here, like the top internships, um, uh, specific information about different uh, organizations, uh, banking, employers, job search, laws. So this just gives them, you know, an overview of some guides and some information. I usually come to this section right here because this is where they're going to find a wealth of information. Resume tips and samples. Sometimes it's hard just getting started, but with the resume samples, they can come to this link and based on the industry that they're interested in, and based on the level of experience of a resume that they're looking for, they will be able to go, well, maybe they don't have a whole lot of experience and they just had a couple of years with some internships, or maybe it's a low level um, experience, but yet they have it. Well, these resumes will give them uh, a fighting chance. It allows them uh, an opportunity to start. Whatever industry that they're looking in, um, business, whether it's education, finance, it will narrow the resumes that we have down or the vault has in this area and it'll pull up the one that's closely related to them. So since accounting is here, we're just gonna start with accounting. We can click view and we can do the PDF or we can download it. Once we download it, it allows the students and I'm gonna move it over here to this string uh, over here. So it allows the students now to go in to make some adjustments. Now, I don't love every template that they have, and um, you probably won't either. So we just ask them to use it as a guide. And this is why we also would like the students to come to us in the Career Development Center. Um, there's not a one size fit all, but at least if we can give them a standard um, template we know when we've reviewed their resume versus when um, they're 
their classmate or, you know, a cousin or someone that may not have all the information about what should go on a resume, we, um, we hope that they'll still come to us to allow us to, um, you know, be a part and share a part in helping them develop the resume. There's some things that you don't have to put on there now. There's some things that you should put on there. Students may be struggling with transferable skills. They may not even know that some things that they did as the head you know, cashier or as the lead team member could definitely let an organization see that they at least have some of those competencies that we mentioned earlier to be able to do the job. So I'm going to go back here. And so the same that uh, opportunity they have for resumes is the same thing for cover letters. The exact same thing, there's industry and there are examples that they can download. Um, interview tips and questions, and Mr. Nolan shared with you about interview stream, but they also have some tips, questions, you know, the uh, STAR method, you know, behavioral questions. It, it takes them through all of this to help prepare them for uh, their interview. And you all know now, and we probably struggle with it. Um, I have a 10 year old, and sometimes when I'm on a Zoom call, he runs by and you know you want to you know you want to make sure that now in this state that we're in for interviews that our students know how to come prepared for the interview you cannot take it for granted that you're not face to face so we have an opportunity to try to prepare them to be ready for that virtual interview and that's why interview stream is really important because it does allow us to do a mock interview with them they, they answer these questions. We can even send you all the video so that you can have conversations with them about maybe what they should be doing differently. They may not hear it from us, but because you all see them um, most days throughout the semester, they may come to you as that mentor and ask for your advice on um, doing uh, interviews virtually. They can research companies a day in the life, if there's a specific industry that they want to know about, they can click on this link and there will be professionals, executives that tell you about a day in a life in that particular career. And then um, the question and answers here, they will just, each uh, discipline, there's something here that they can go in and look at and just get some more information. So you will see here all the categories. So if they're looking for it, they can find it in the vault. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and I'm going to ask Miss Emily to come with my next move. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said earlier, my name is Miss Emily Briggs. I'm the new coordinator with the uh, Career Development Center. And I have the privilege to introduce you or maybe reintroduce some of you to mynextmove.org. Um, now, this is a website that is sponsored by the Department of Labor. And so uh, one of the best parts of this is, as you and I know, we don't like to work harder than we have to. There are no credentials necessary to access the site or use any of it. It's not going to ask for your email or login. Um, so once you hop on here, this website is really nice for students that Maybe they don't know at all what they would like to do. Maybe they have a couple of ideas or maybe they can put words to what they would like to do. Um, and then some of them, maybe they're in a program and they are you know, on track to earn a degree, but they don't know what they want to do with that degree. So as you can see on the right hand side, um, if that person really doesn't know at all, maybe they're entering the university and they're kind of just general studies, what am I gonna do? they can go through and they can do just a, in a career assessment inventory. Um, so it might take a few of their ideas, what they're interested in and turn it into words for them to put towards that. Um, now, if it's someone that knows maybe the industry that they want to go into, but they don't know all of the available career options, they can use this second area. So that browsing the careers by industry. Um, and then one of my favorite assets of it is going in and actually searching. So maybe I had an aunt that said, you would be a great teacher. 
So mm -hmm. I type in teacher and I'm going to search that. And it won't just come up with elementary, middle school, high school teacher. Uh, it'll give you some other ideas of things that you could do in that same industry. Um, so you'll notice on here, um, there will be a sunshine. And that means for any of those specific um, careers, they will have a bright outlook. So maybe they are in need for that position. Um, maybe there is a higher salary right now because um, there are like a lack of teacher assistants, for example. Uh, so as I look at this and I thought, oh, hey, maybe I just wanted to teach elementary school or preschool. There's also maybe an option to become a special education teacher in preschool. So I'm going to click on that option. And it is great for students, I think, because it keeps it brief and clear cut. So it might say what they do. It'll tell them a little bit about, um, you know, some of the skills that would be helpful in order for them to enter that field, some of the abilities that they would really need to have in order to be successful. And then as you go down, what tech, or I'm sorry, what personalities do well in that field? And then probably most important to them, what is the job outlook? So one, it's bright. So there's very likely that they would be able to come out of school and you know, enter a, um, a position, even if it is entry level. And then they can see the, um, you know, the median salary. So yeah, maybe they won't be starting at 60,000, but that's a pretty good outlook for that position. And then um, as Ms. Duke mentioned on our last program, it's really great right now because we don't always have the option, you know, students might not be um, in a summer classroom, but they still want to be earning something or finding a training or finding a licensure. Um, so they can go right here and see, first of all, what education is required for that position. And second, um, what are some trainings that I could be doing in the meantime, if I'm not earning that degree, that would really put me on the right path. Um, the last thing is, it gives you some options to explore other things. So if you were interested in doing special education, well, you might be interested in health and counseling or other types of education. Um, so those are just a few of the things that My Next Move can do for you um, and your students, hopefully. And it's a really great little tool for someone that just really wants to explore what their path looks like. I'll turn it back to you, Ms. Duke. Thank you. So after this session, you all will receive some information. But the last thing that I do want to quickly show with you, uh, show to you, and this is um, the National Association of College and Employers. There's just a wealth of information on their website, and a lot of times. Um, colleges and the universities will submit information. So this one was kind of submitted by another college, but we are so creative. Look who submitted this. <laughs> so we're going to share this with you all. And um, this is a way that uh, we can use this tool to kind of help our students even more um, focus on the areas those core competencies that we might need to work with them a little more on. And so it says, are you career ready? And here's a, a self-assessment tool. And by them answering these questions, then they even know what area that they may need to work on a little bit. And so it's a self-assessment. So there's no need to not be honest about it because the more they share with us, about where they feel that there's a need, then the better we will be to helping them in these areas of the core competencies that are recognized by um, NACE. So you will get a copy of this for your information and your records, and you will also receive a copy of the core competencies, which gives you definitions of um, what each of those core competencies mean, okay? So each of those um, platforms could take in itself an hour for us to go over with you all, but this was just a condensed version so that we could um, help you. So whatever we can do to help you as you are working with the students, we are here. And then as you are interacting with the students, you could please um, share with them that we actually have the resources that they need 
to help them make the transition from, from college to their career. So help us reach the students. And um, in our uh, department, what we're hoping to do, as many of you know that you have internships that you are familiar with that the students have or full and part-time jobs. We love that information. What we're trying to do is to create a centralized database system where it can be housed in the Career Development Center. We are in the process of having our website rebuilt, um, redesigned to make it a little more user-friendly. And we will have things such as students being able to report their internships, employers being able to tell us the students that are interning so that when you all need this data and you need it in one spot, we're hoping to be that, that housing place. We don't wanna take it because because every area needs to keep that data, but we want to at least be able to have a centralized location where if somebody wants this, we can give it to them and it can be the same you know, format. Our message today is we just wanna partner with you all and um, you know, we're thankful to have this opportunity. Handshake is such a powerful tool for our students. They already have uh, customized decks or we can uh, specifically create some decks for you if you create a module in your classroom that's career development and you want to focus on handshake it's already ready we can just provide that to you or you can call us there will be a form on our website that when you want us to come to your classroom if you want somebody in the career development center to do something special um please you can fill out that form Tell us when you need us. Tell us what date. We've done that. Um, you know, I, there was a professor that um, had another appointment, and that day their focus was um, on careers. And we came in from our department, and I was a teacher for a day. So um, we will do that, and we're excited about that. Um, and again, if you have any questions, now is the time um, for you to ask any questions. And um, we, we are looking forward to you guys getting your Career Connector badge. We have tried to help you as much as possible. Um, please check the chats. And if there's anything we can do, please let us know. But this time, we would like to open it up if you have any questions. Come on. <laughs> Hello. There is a question in the chat. Yeah, there. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Mr. Nolan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was just saying that there's a question in the chat and I didn't know if you wanted to do that question first before you opened it up or? Yeah, let's let's do the questions in the chat first, okay? Okay, so the question in the chat says, a lot of our students are non-traditional or mid-career level students, not traditional 19 and 22 year olds. So what specific services uh, do you have for these students particularly? Well, I think we have the still the career exploration. Some of them may not, uh, still know where they are, you know, um, as far as their career search. But we can give them access to those databases that allows them to know what jobs are available, what services are available, if they're still in need of us working with them to help them do their resume. We can do that. Um, if they're not sure how to research information on companies, we can help them do that. What questions should they be asking when they have uh, interviews or when they're just trying to learn more about those companies? The same services that we offer to, you know, the non-traditional students, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, our traditional students, those non-traditional students still need those same services. And so we have them available in the Career Development Center, whether it's finding out about um, jobs with the government, um, state, we want to be able to take those core competencies which have been recognized by all employers and just help equip them so that when they have the opportunity to be in front of these um, uh, organizations that we can still better prepare and equip them. So we have those services and I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Is there another question? 
I have a question. Okay, is this Miss Bryant? Yes. Okay. We sometimes get a. I work in the College of Education, and we sometimes get uh, people from out of state who want to hire some of our students upon graduation to become teachers. Now, sometimes they want to join the job fair. So will they have to go through the handshake? Yes. How do they do that? Yes, ma'am. Any employer that wants to attend the career fair, uh, whether it's the internship fair, the career fair, in, in order for them to um, be in our system to receive information about all the fairs, any things that we're doing um, at Tennessee State University, they really must be registered in Handshake. And I think that's why there's, there's uh, sometimes a disconnect because employers will see the contact information of the people in the department and they'll go straight to that department. And so sometimes the Career Development Center does not even know that they're there. And maybe they're doing um, a special um, industry specific career fair that we're not aware of, but it really is helpful that moving forward, and I get it, you guys, um, there was a, a shortage of staff in the Career Development Center, but we are beefing up our team and we can be a better of a service by helping the companies come through the Career Devo uh, Development Center. And then we can then share with you, hey, you know, these companies want to come and they want to come in your classroom. They want to meet with the students or they want to have something special. At least we know as a university who's on campus, what employer is, is on site. And so we're just wanting to um, try to bridge the gap so that they're not always just kind of coming through the colleges, but they're also coming through the Career Development Center so we'll know who's on site. But if they're interested in a university program that's sponsored by the Career Development Center, every employer must uh, register in Handshake. So uh, Ms. Duke, there is another question coming up. Um, so with the sensitive needs of students that have disabilities, um, how does your department work with students who need additional support for job searches and interview needs? And, uh, and before we go into that, it's actually funny because Amazon just sent us a few job postings that were specifically catered to individuals with disabilities. That's cool. Right. And so thank you. We did just see that because what happens is some of them don't post their jobs um, in um, Handshake, which is where it needs to be. They send it to us individually. And so as we got those, I send it to our team and say, hey, we need to post this. But the greatest opportunity for us is to partner with that department. By partnering with the department, uh, the students are coming to you. Um, and while there's some confidentiality that's related to um, some of, uh, you know, the disabilities possibly, by us working with your department, we can then work with the employer to find out how we can best meet the need of that student. I have not had the opportunity since being there, and I've, I've only been there since August of 2019, to have interacted with any student that has come to share that there was a specific need. But I think that here's a great opportunity that we have to work with your department so that we can um, address those needs. We are like really in the business of partnering. So as we are working through our workshops right now that we're going to offer for the fall, we would love to be able to include you all and offer something so that those students that may have um, those disabilities or may not want to talk about them at that time, we can meet with them one-on-one -on -one to find out how we can best assist them. And so as we're building relationships with the employers, it will kind of help us make those connections. That was a great question. Thank you. Um, another question, and there are just a couple more right now. Um, do you still have students as career center ambassadors and who can share services of the career center? I'm, so, sorry. I'm sorry, can those ambassadors share those services? Listen, that is like um, a present at Christmas time for us. We would love to have amb ambassadors. And we have just proposed 
through a grant that if you all just cross your fingers for us that we receive that not only um, did we suggest that we have ambassadors, we also put money in that grant to be able to give them a, a donation, a stipend. As it stands right now, there is one ambassador and it kind of goes through the student activities department where that person is the ambassador for the Career Development Center. But what does not happen currently is they're not required to meet with us. We're not a part of the selection process of the ambassador. So sometimes the students just get the role of an ambassador, but have not really um, connected with the Career Development Center. Now that's just my experience since my 2019 appointment. But I do know in the past that there has been ambassadors. But when the department kind of went down a little, um, the ambassadors were not used. But I can assure you that it will be implemented in the fall. And any student that truly has a desire to be an ambassador for the Career Development Center, we will definitely work with them. So the, the, the role exists. We just have to do some recruitment to make sure that we are getting um, you know, the students who really want to be those ambassadors. Another question, Ms. Emily? Yes, uh, the next question is, um, do you have any specific programs or contact for supporting veterans? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, one more time? Do we have any specific programs or contact for supporting veterans? Oh, so, you know, at the Avon uh, Campus Center, they just opened up a, a veterans um, area over there. Now, we have not specifically began to partner with them, but yes, there, there are opportunities for us to make those connections, and we see more of that happening in the fall. Right now, companies do specifically reach out to us, and they tell us we're looking for veterans through the federal government, the USA Jobs, uh, those positions are available, but I will tell you that is an area of improvement for the Career Development Center. And uh, we do know the contact persons, and we will make sure that that happens during the fall. All right, and then uh, one more question that I see so far. Where will we find the Career Services Assessment for the Pandemic Passport in eLearn so that we can earn our points? <laughs> Oh, somebody wants that badge. Dr. C will be able to respond to that. And, and she just did. Um, so well, the assessment I is more in the- specific though, Emily, because I think the person asked where in eLearn, it's under the assessment. Oh, right. It's uh, when you log into uh, the Pandemic Passport course shell and you click on assessments, it's there. Or if you go to um, module 11 and click on um, the assessment, it'll take you to the assessment there. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I will share with you all that we did record the first session and of course we're recording this session and so uh, if there are any specific information you know that you still kind of want to ask you can reach out to us and we'll do that. We're virtual. Um, we respond to emails I do provide my personal cell number, so I am available. And I really, I wish I could see all of your faces because I'm so excited that all of you all um, attended this session. We have been trying to do this for some time. We will offer these um, classes or these type training sessions as often as we need to. We'll come to your classrooms, and I know it's probably going to be virtual, but um, we really are here. Um, for the same purpose, and that is for our students. And I'm excited about the direction of the Career Development Center. I'm excited about our new director that's coming in. I'm excited about the team, but more importantly, I'm so excited to have the opportunity to, um, to be in your presence, to share with you all the services that we do have available. Ms. Duke, there was uh, one or a couple final questions. Um, <laughs> But one in particular mentioned that um, by asking about a job interview practice workshop and if we'll offer one. And I don't think we mentioned that um, that we'll be able to have faculty and staff request those. So I don't yeah. know if you want to speak to that. 
Yes, and so, so if I understand the question, you want to know if we will offer interview workshops and maybe mock interviews, and if the professors, the faculty will have access to reviewing them? Was that the question? Not necessarily reviewing them. I think they just want to make sure that we are offering a workshop like that. Oh, yes. We will, absolutely. You will see a list. One of the things that we're gonna try to do, um, and I'm sure if, maybe it was done in the past, but just since I've been here, you are going to see a list of services, workshops and seminars for the entire fall semester. And um, we're going to develop our own little um, career connector badge. And so as our students complete these um, workshops and training, we'll be giving them a badge too. So yes, we'll make that available for the students as well. I think that was it. And I was just mentioning, um, so on our new website, you will be able to go in as a faculty or staff member and say that you would like to request a presentation from us and we can come to your classroom and make sure that it is um, exactly what you're looking for. So if it's interviewing or if it's resume workshop, whatever that might be. Yeah, we can do a, a resume and root beer or rodeo and resume. We can do it. We can call it anything. We just want to make sure that our students get um, the information. You guys, we are so excited. Um, we will honor your time and we won't hold you, but we are available. Oh, I see a hand. It's Cheryl. <laughs> okay. Go. I'm getting feedback that my quiz is a little messed up. Y'all just slow your roll just for a second. I must have, I, I messed it up. I, I think I did a multi-select and it's not giving y'all your full point. So just hang on. Don't, don't, don't do the quiz until 12 noon. No, let's say 1215. Let me figure out what's going on. And for those who've taken it already, I'll make sure you get your full points. Just hang on for me. Yeah. I love you guys. Thank you. Well, you guys, thank you all so much. We are here and available to um, be of assistance to you. But more importantly, whatever you're doing that you need us for to help your students, let us know, OK? Thank Great. you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.